Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. I'm very excited about Lou Epton. He is one of the best ones on your radio. So we're glad to hear Real Talk Radio back in Las Vegas on a powerful station. My hat's off to him. Lou Epton does a very, very good show. I wouldn't miss him if I had to. He tells the truth. He tells the news that other people don't tell us. And we're glad that he's on your station. Lou Epton, weekdays at 10 p.m. on the Hot One, 840-KVEG. Talk Radio, 840-KVEG, Las Vegas. Coast. It's better than the Tom Likas show. Oh, God. And now, and now he, he is Tom Likas. Six minutes after the hour, thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program with a radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Oh, this is a great question. It's a great question. It's one I've been through. I've through this with an ex of mine. Yowee. We always tell you to write us if you've got a great idea for a show. And we get hundreds and hundreds of email messages from people. I mean hundreds of them. And we get ideas. Some of them we've done before and people didn't happen to be listening when we did them. Some of them are lousy. Something we have to take a while to think about. This one I got a couple of weeks ago, and it is a good one. The uh, person writing to me, he didn't say not to give his name. Should I give his name? Mm, and probably cause a problem at home. I don't want to give him a problem at home. He lives in Sacramento, okay? And he knows who he knows who he is. Now, I don't even have to make one up because the name is not germane to the topic, but uh, you live in Sacramento and you know who you are. And here it is. Tom. I thought this would be an interesting conversation for your show. I am 31 years old and part owner of a small business. We are in need of a new receptionist for part-time work, and I'm in charge of weeding out the preliminary candidates and hiring this person. Here's the problem. I am recently married. I realized that if I hire anyone remotely attractive, I will get that look from my wife. I hate to think that if I hire the best person for the job and she's attractive, that this will add a strain to our relationship. The reality is that my wife and I both have careers and spend a large part of our time in the office during the week. The last thing I need is any distractions at work or the question and answer sessions when I get home at night. Am I paranoid or smart because I'm trying to avoid a potential problem? Would this be discrimination if I hire the least attractive person for a job? You have a great show signed this guy from Sacramento whose name I'm not going to give because I don't want his wife arguing with him tonight. What a great question. A great question because one of my exes, the ex who is now a lesbian, okay, let's just, without being specific about who it is, 
since they don't all know each other, maybe more than one is a lesbian, okay? So we don't know which one I'm talking about. But uh, my ex, who's a lesbian, back when she claimed not to be a lesbian and she was married to me, was always very interested in who worked over at the radio station. Now I see why. Ah! No. Uh, she was always very interested in knowing who I was hiring because the minute I hired somebody really attractive... And everybody at the station was not really attractive. It's, come on, folks, it's radio. But every once in a while, you would have someone who could do the job who was really attractive. Now, there was one woman, can, may I say, I cannot remember her full name. I, believe me, there have been nights I've wished over the years that I could remember her name, okay? There was a woman I hired to run the control board at the radio station. So, they, you know, we have shifts. There's, there's always somebody at the radio station who's running the board. Right now, there's somebody, when we go to the break and we go to the commercials, there's somebody pressing the buttons and making the commercials come on. Not, that doesn't happen automatically. There's usually a human being doing that. We have a human being here and at your local radio station. Usually, there is a person pressing buttons making the commercials come on. I hired a woman. Now, again, we needed somebody to do the job. And we had several less than attractive women doing this job, including a couple of less than attractive women who were doing talk shows and uh, one particularly less than attractive woman who was a producer, but... You know, hey, they were all very competent. They were all very good. They were all people, I mean, I, they were not hired because they were or weren't attractive. They were hired because they were good. And the only reason I'm even noting their level of attractiveness is to show that I didn't just go out and, you know, ask people to put their cup size on the uh, job application and then, then hire them based on that particular fetish or quirk. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we hired people according to their ability. And a woman came in who was qualified to run the board. And she was not only qualified to run the board, but I've always been very frank about this. Radio stations have a commitment to the Federal Communications Commission to bring in people of various ethnic and racial minorities. And this woman was a Mexican-American. Her name was Anna. Anna was 21 years old. She had a full-time job. Her job, just to give you an idea that I did not just go out and hire some slot, during the day, Anna was the receptionist for the local Catholic archdiocese. That was her day job. And she needed a few extra bucks, and she took a job running the board for me. Not for my show, but I was running the radio station, and Anna came in, and she was running the board. Now, you could see when I hired Anna that she was a very attractive woman. Who also knew how to run the board, and, very important helped the radio station fulfill its commitment to seek diversity in the workforce. And she was not the only minority we had hired. She was just, I mean, it was a perfect match in that she was qualified, available at the hours we needed her to be there, reliable by all accounts, competent, and attractive. Attractive was irrelevant, but she was attractive. What I did not know when I hired Anna for the job, and I will admit every once in a while I checked her out, okay? Just checked her out, didn't? No sexual harassment, no hostile workforce, no... <clears throat> no asking her out on dates, nothing like that. I was married, after all. But what I did not know about Anna when I hired her for this job is that she was not only the receptionist for the Catholic Archdiocese. She was not only an attractive woman who had experience running a control board at a radio station. She had another part-time job. 
she modeled swimsuits. 21 years old. And one day, I come into the office and there's this big commotion in the hallway. And I don't know what's going on. I thought something had happened. You know, like some news came out. You know, you're at a radio station. A news story will come out and people will all freak out. You know, what happened? What happened? You know, president was shot. Uh, a plane was shot down. This, that. You know, what happened? See this big crowd. And I'm figuring there must be some story, you know. So I come running down the hallway of the radio station. And I said, what happened? What happened? In the middle of this crowd, there's Anna with a big book. And the big book was her portfolio from her other part-time job. And Anna, who was one hot number, I mean, truth be told, she was just unbelievable. I had never seen her wearing as little as she was wearing in these photos. And may I say... Oh, yeah, I looked. I sure I looked. Absolutely, I looked. I can still remember those photographs to this day. She was something. I mean, she was... Mm. I couldn't believe this woman worked at the Catholic Archdiocese during the day, and then... Man. Anyway, here's the deal. I hired this woman for one reason and one reason only. The reason was we needed somebody to run the board. And of the couple of people I interviewed, she had the most experience. And on top of that, to be frank, her name ended in Z, okay? And, and we needed people whose names ended in Z to fulfill our requirements to the federal government. These were the two primary reasons she was hired, period. And I'm very upfront and honest about that. Our station had had a lousy track record hiring minorities. Here was someone who was a minority, who also happened to be articulate and bright and available to do the job and, and, and competent and had experience. Boom! Great! Wow! You know? Instead of the usual, where companies are like going out and finding anybody they can find to fulfill a quota, we actually found a competent person, a bright person, uh, to be the board operator at the radio station. One day, and this brings us now back around full circle, and it brings us back around to the point of the email that was sent to us by the listener in Sacramento. One day, my wife at the time, who is now, by the way, a lesbian, and one, and by the way, uh, her name ends in Z also. One has to wonder, you know, anyway. You figure it out. Anyway, one day, she comes down. Well, I wasn't going to reveal which one she was, but I guess there was only one whose name I didn't see. Okay, fine. One day, she comes down to the radio station to meet me. We're going out for the night. We're going out to dinner or something. So my shift ends. I'm getting off the air, okay? I was on from 3 to 7. It's 7 o'clock, and I am about to leave, and my wife arrives, and she looks through the control booth, and my engineer, who was male... He was not hired for his cup size, although he easily had the largest cup size at the station. Uh, my engineer, who was male, who looked a lot like the engineer in the movie Talk Radio. If you saw the movie, this guy looked and acted like that guy in the movie, except the movie was made after this period of time in my life. My wife at the time comes in and looks through the window and sees this vision of a board operator. Sees her in there, and then that look that the listener who wrote to me talks about the look. I'm getting the look. How could you? She didn't say how could you. She's just looking like, who's that? That's Anna, the new board operator. Oh, I wonder how she got this job. Experience, maybe? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Well, you know, she's running a very complicated shift here with a lot of you know, a lot of breaks she has to take and a lot of, you know, she has to back time a lot of stuff. It's, it's, it's difficult work. She's good at it. Uh-huh. No, I'm serious. She's good at it. Uh-huh. You know, and then it's like, what am I supposed to do in a situation like this? Should I have not hired somebody who was like, I mean, she was the only woman who was this attractive at the radio station. She was unbelievable, but she was the only one, and she really, really, really fit the bill for the job. 
Should I have gone out of my way to find somebody who, you know, could use a good wax job, uh, somebody who's, you know, 300 pounds overweight? Should I have gone out of my way to find an unattractive person so my insecure wife at the time would be satisfied? Or do you just say, damn the torpedoes? Or worse yet, do you just tell your wife, don't come upstairs, honey, I'll meet you down in the lobby. <laughs> And that's what this listener wants to know about. He has a small business. He's got to hire somebody for part-time work. He needs a receptionist. And he's got to weed out the preliminary candidates and hire the right person. He's afraid now to hire anyone remotely attractive because his wife's going to give him that look. So he's afraid that the best person for the job will be attractive. So what's he supposed to do? Not hire the best person for the job if she happens to be really attractive? Or... Do you just say the hell with it? I need the most competent people I can get, and if one of them happens to be really, really, really attractive, so be it. What do you do? And if you're the wife and you're sitting home watching this, or the girlfriend or whatever, what do you do? And this insecurity thing, I don't, you know, I, I, I frankly don't understand that, but nonetheless. Let's talk about this toll-free from across North America. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. 21 minutes after the hour, my name is Tom Likas, and we will continue. This is the Tom Likas Show. Talk Radio 840-KVET in Las Vegas. This is Art Bell, and I'm with you on our new flagship station in Las Vegas, KVEG 840. This is Susan in Las Vegas. I'd really like to thank you for carrying Art Bell during the week all five hours now. We've waited a long time for this, and thanks for carrying Dreamland. You're, uh, you're a real good station, and I thank you very much. Art Bell, overnight, every night, now with all five hours here at 840 KVEG. Day 42. Shortly after we rediscovered the jungle on 840-KVEG, Livingston was quickly devoured by its ruthless natives. Apparently, he attempted to launch a scud which was not black enough and was carried away by an angry mob. The chilling mantra, have a take, don't suck, still echoes in my conscience. The lingo, although primitive, is quite complex, requiring further study. Weekdays from 10 to 1. The jungle is here on 840-KVEG. In the morning. I learn more from Inus' program and hear more candid comments from newsmakers than networks have on TV or radio. Public figures, celebrities, I mean, this man gets a response from everyone. Very insightful, political, funny, a hearty guest vote for Inus in the morning. Excellent show. Stay with the one who's hot right here on 840-KVEG. Back with more on the hot one, 840-KVEG. <laughs> 26 minutes after the hour, is it sound like a show? 1-800-5800-TOP. A listener wants to know about the receptionist he needs to hire for his small business. What happens if she's really attractive? Should he hire the best woman for the job if she's really attractive, or should he save himself the trouble in his marriage? Mary, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mary. Well, this happened to me. My dentist needed somebody to be his office manager, and I was looking to change jobs. And we just got to talking one time when I went in. And um, he said, well, you know, you'd be perfect for the job, and I'll call your job, and I'll get, uh, you know, talk to your boss and whatnot. So he did all the checking around, and we even had an amount set, and, I mean, everything was ready for the job. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you had the experience. You were I mean, qualified. I had more than the experience. I had been doing this for seven years. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and we, we get along really well, and he's a very nice person, and I've met his wife because she just happened to come in one day when I was there, and she came to the back where he was working on my mouth, you know, and uh, she was really nice, really sweet, really kind, and I mean, every, I mean, I just thought it was a perfect setup for me, uh -huh. and I am a sucker. 
I am a sucker for married people. Uh oh, they're doing it. Um, what are they doing over there? They're doing a drill. Oh, a drill? We better finish up here. Yo, you're a sucker for married people? Yeah, I just think that men who are respectable and they are upfront about being married and are good and, and like, you know, that kind of relationship that I saw between them, like his wife coming in and all mm -hmm. that, I just think it's lovely. You like I, that, okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. I just think it's wonderful. And, I mean, I, married men are sacred to me. That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I was brought up. So I thought this is the perfect setup. You know, it's a, there's a good couple, and they have a good relationship, and he's respectable, and I'm not going to have any problems, and all this thing, right? Well, he mentions to her, you've met her, he says, like two days before I was supposed to start. You came in such and such a day, and she was in a chair, and she said, absolutely no way. You do not hire her. And he came to me and he said, you know, I feel really bad. I had already quit my job. And wow. he felt really bad. And I just didn't want to go and get a lawsuit and all that stupid t stuff, you know. But I was really hurt. Well, even, even, if you, uh, even if you sued, could you really sue? Me? You, were, you were not hired because you were too attractive. Well, that's discrimination. Well, yeah, but that, uh, based on what? Discrimination based on race, based on gender, based on religion, based on handicap. Well, looks. But there is no law about the discrimination because you're too good looking. It was really bad. I mean, I it know it's really terrible, bad. but there's no law and to it's cover. It's not the first time this has happened, like, where I felt that people, you know, women look at you funny and, and, and if they're with their man out, they grab their hand or they get close to them or they give them a look. As if, what, are we predators just because we don't look bad? Or we, because we work out or because we take care of their, our bodies? or Well, that's what whatever. I don't understand. What, what's wrong with, a, with, with the wife who is afraid, who, who feels threatened by somebody like you? That, that's the question for me. Mary, thank you. The Tom Likas Show. Talk Radio 840 Las Vegas has the station that's hot. 840-KVEG. From the fun and wit of Imus in the morning, daytime talk with an edge, and the sports book at night, KVEG makes it hot. Keep it here on the hot one. 840-KVEG. The white zone is for the immediate loading and unloading of passengers only. Wait a minute, that's my other job. This is the Tom Likas Show. 26 minutes before the hour. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. What do you do when the most qualified person for the job in your office is the most attractive person? Maybe the most attractive person you've ever known. Do you uh, hire that person? Or do you try to save yourself problems? At home. Marguerite, first time caller to the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Marguerite. How are you doing, Tom? Okay. Good. I just wanted to uh, compliment you on your fine talk radio. Thank you. And I wanted to call in and say that it's been kind of interesting listening to you this evening in regards to the man who is worried about hiring an attractive woman and what his wife will think. Yes. But, um, being a woman myself of 29 years of age, I think that obviously we should always hire the most qualified people, and it's unfortunate that we have to get to these petty issues that really don't qualify somebody for the job or not what, what they look like, but um, I think if the role was reversed, and perhaps maybe the wife was an executive, and she had to hire somebody, and she hired an attractive male, she needs, you know, I think women need to put themselves in those shoes as well and kind of think about... I think women have a hard time doing that because I think most women can't imagine being the boss. You think so? I think so, yeah. Well, you're probably right there. There's a lot of, I think a lot of women have a hard time thinking about being the boss. But um, myself, I, I have a very attractive husband, and I'm very happy in my relationship, and I know that he comes home to me every night. And that... So you're telling me if the swimsuit model was the best person for the job... 
you would not be at all perturbed if he hired that person. No, not at all. I have a lot of friends that are absolutely gorgeous that I, uh, you know, that we hang out with and that he associates with and I associate with. And uh, not at all. I think it's the it's the level of the relationship. How deep is your relationship? Where is your trust? Where is your security? If you've chosen a mate for your life to marry, then you're choosing somebody who... You all right, that, this is all good on paper, and I don't disagree with what you're saying. But I'm dealing in the real world. The real world is... That, and, and may I say, and I don't say this to be, to be offensive or to get your attention or yank your chain. I'm saying it because I believe it to be true. I do believe a lot of women have low self-esteem. There, the re, there is a reality. I mean, we see it in the movies. And because women have a low self-esteem, because women are worried about what men are looking at in Playboy, and right. what men are looking at in the movies, and what men are looking at on TV, uh, I do believe that even the most attractive woman will feel threatened. Not all women, but some very attractive women will feel threatened merely because... A woman may not see herself as being as attractive as her husband sees her. But I think all women should see themselves as being attractive. They should, but again, shoulda, woulda, coulda. We, we live in the real world here. Right, but see, what, what kind of an issue is that then? Do we need to address the other issue of why do women see themselves as unattractive? What kind of things are sending us signals and messages that we, we feel that way? I mean, how many men feel unattractive? I think men think they're all that and more. See? Exactly. And so where, where are the signals being sent to men where they think that, that they don't need to worry about it? And where are women getting signals that they need to worry about? And they need to look like the Playboy models. And they need to look like the centerfold. Well, I, I don't think you can blame that on the media. Because unless you had a public that was willing to accept that idea, uh, it would not successfully be uh, portrayed. Okay. I can see that point. I, I think... Personally, you know, speaking from personal experience, I really don't think I'd have a problem with it. Now, I haven't been in a situation where my husband has hired a swimsuit model to be his assistant or something in that, of that nature. So you're telling but, me that if your husband hired that woman, and I'm telling you, she was something else. Yeah, I, I, I'd be lying if I told you that to this day, I don't see this woman in my daydreams every now, every now and again. But that's Oof. reality. We all do that. Yeah, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, it, but it's, not, it's one thing to daydream. This woman was working with me. She was in my office alone with me. So she was walking around the office with her portfolio. No, no, nothing was going on. But okay. you have to look at it from the point of view of my wife, who would come into the office once every three months and she comes in and sees this woman. But you were still spending time with your wife in the evenings. You still had a relationship. We did. And everything was fine. Yeah. You just happened to have this drop-dead gorgeous person working for you. Who was confident. Who was confident and secure and who felt good about what she was doing for her career and felt good about working for you. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I just... I but if you're sitting at home, do you see it as rationally as all that? Well, maybe you do, but I think there's a lot of women who don't. And, and why do they not? Is the point. I mean, I, I feel like I would just because... I have my evenings home with my husband, and we still talk, and we still go to movies, and we still go and do fun things together. And I think I would probably know if, if the relationship was slipping, and then that would be the next step to correct it, perhaps if he was putting more interest into this newly hired person. And that would be a whole other issue. Marguerite, I thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Art, first-time caller from a car phone. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Art. How's it going? And I care. Thank you. I'm doing fine. you got to come back down to the desert sometime. I got to meet you and your wife, and it was a great time out at the hotel last time you were here. I love Palm Springs. Anyway, i got to tell you, we're having just the opposite problem at our office. I'm working in my, lover, my boyfriend's um, office right now, just helping out. And his boss is such a pig. If she's not well endowed and perky and young and blonde haired, um, thank you, but we'll get back to you. And I'm not going to say what kind of office because, you know, the media business is small down here. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we had one woman come in who has 10 years experience in the field in what our office does. She just happened to weigh 250 pounds. Mm -hmm. And that was basically, um, hey, great, we'll get back to you and bye-bye. 
You know, but it, see, it can work both ways. I mean, yeah. you, you heard from the woman earlier, Mary, who was too attractive and didn't get the job. Yeah, and see, another thing, I'm looking at it this way. If you're married, if you just got married and you are that insecure over your husband, you need to recheck your vows and think about it. I, you know what? I agree with you. If you're that insecure, you've got a problem. Because there are beautiful people and there are ugly people all over this planet. And every time one walks the door, I mean, it's time to start, you know, stop being so stupid when it comes to these issues of, oh, this person is better than I am because they look better. It's like, can they do the job? Yes. If they can't, bye bye That's easy, real easy. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I just had to kind of say it does work both ways. Because like I said, if she's not really perky and, you know, all that and big hair and more, she doesn't even get a second interview. Thank you, Art. Have a good day, Tom. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. 1-800-5800-TOM. 18 minutes before the hour. My name is Tom Likas. You're listening to The Tom Likas Show. Talk Radio 840 Las Vegas has the station that's hot. 840-KVEG. From the fun and wit of Imus in the morning, daytime talk with an edge, and the sports book at night, KVEG makes it hot. Here at 840-KVEG, we care what you think, so let us know by calling the 840-feedback line at 225-2750. Imus in the morning, the jungle with Jim Rome, the Tom Likas show, Pharrell on the bench, Lou Epton, Art Bell, and now the Dr. Laura Schlesinger Show. We'd love to know what you think, so call the 840 feedback line at 225-2750. That's 225-2750.